Hi, I'm Anthony Kavon. I play Raheem on Hulu and Disney Plus's Love Victor. And this is Young Entertainment Mac. How's it going? How's uh, your, uh, it's nighttime there, right? Yeah, it is. Um, it's going. <laughs> I have a really long day. Um, all right. So at the end of season two of Love, Victor, uh, you're st Victor standing by the door and the audience is all holding their breath. What was that like for you? After the fact, like after it happened and you got the audience's feedback, back and like everyone watched it like what what was that um experience i guess like from when from from when uh when that happened to when you got like the script for season three yeah um so that scene um like right before victor uh rings the doorbell the scene where raheem kind of like confesses his attraction and explains how he feels to Victor was the last scene that we had filmed for the entirety of season two. So we definitely ended filming that on a pretty heavy and serious note. Um, and then when the show came out, you know, none of us knew what was going to happen for season three until like we started filming pretty much. Um, so when the show came out and like season two when season two came out, the fans were, <laughs> the fans either loved Raheem or they hated Raheem. So it was definitely like a lot to handle. I was not expecting that kind of um, attention from the fan base. Um, I guess that goes to show like how passionate our fans are. Um, <laughs> but it was definitely overwhelming and it was extremely nerve wracking. I actually had to like, deactivate my Instagram for a little bit because it was just a constant barrage of messages of either we love Raheem or we hate Raheem, get him out of here. So it was like, it was a lot to handle. Um, but ultimately I had no idea what was going to happen for season three until we got the scripts. So um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, for sure. And then once you got the script, like, what what was that like for you? Like, knowing who was behind the door, knowing that it was Benji and not Raheem? Um, it was... Uh, I wouldn't say it was a disappointment, but it definitely was, like, I felt that the writers had set Raheem up in a way for season two to be the choice for season three. And uh, without like, you know, pointing the blame towards anyone, but I know that there was a lot of back and forth between the writer's room and the studio about who they think should be behind the door. And also like based off of, you know, um, like the fan base reaction, it was a hard decision to make from my understanding. I was definitely a little bummed because I didn't know where like Raheem stood in terms of like his friendship with Raheem and Pilar and the Salazars and where Raheem stood in terms of like the story and how they would incorporate my character on the show past being uh, a love triangle character. But I'm really happy with how the writers kind of wrap things up and were able to not only give me a platform to provide representation for people of the Muslim and queer community, but also give me like material to work with as an actor that um, didn't rely necessarily on being, you know, just a love interest for the main character. Um, I was really happy that they were um, considered in that they wanted Raheem to have his own kind of storyline and plot for season three. Yeah, and I thought they did a, I, I thought Raheem's, Raheem's storyline in season three was actually one of the strongest um, out of everyone's. Yeah, um, I agree. I'm really, I'm actually very happy with, you know, how things turned out and, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I think the fans, for the most part, are happy with how, you know, the characters played out this season. And what, what do you think your storyline would have been had it been Raheem behind the door? I think it would have been, I think it would have been really different. Um, for sure. I, I, 
I, I can't, you know, say what it would be because I have no idea, but mm -hmm. I, I would say that maybe Raheem's storyline would have been more so to serve the, you know, Victor's storyline instead of, you know, having his own. So, like I said, I'm really happy with how things turn out because although like I probably would have gotten more screen time if I was re or uh, if I was Victor's choice, I am happy that, you know, the writers were able to incorporate Raheem for the plot in season three and, and give him, you know, material that would resonate with people. Totally. And so getting into the scenes, the first time we actually see you, you're you're looking out the window, you're with your mom. What what was it like creating that dynamic between you and Artemis? Um, uh, I, I can't, how do you say your last name? I'm so bad. Um, what? Pebdani. Pebdani. And yeah, what what was the dynamic between you two? How did you guys create that that bond? Because it was like it was it was you, you could sense there was a mother son bond there. Like you could you could feel that sense. So like, how did you guys create that? Um, you know, there's something to be said about like natural chemistry between actors. Um, I, I'll be honest, I, we had originally cast a different actress to play. Raheem's mother and we had filmed those episodes with that actress who I think is a lovely person and a great actress but ultimately um, our show owners and the studio believed that you know there wasn't enough chemistry between the two of us and so she was recast with Artemis and I I think she was definitely the, the stronger choice in terms of like portraying that kind of like mother-son bond and that chemistry between us I didn't know who I mean, I, I knew of her from her previous work, but I, I'd never met Artemis prior to filming that. And we ended up filming those scenes over the course of, I think, two days. Oh. So I, I didn't really get to know her very well, but, you know, something about it just clicked and we worked really well together. And um, I'm really happy with how those scenes turned out. Yeah, no, me too. And I was actually curious what your thoughts were in terms of like the fact that like they made her like accept Raheem as opposed to like what we saw with Victor's mom. Like, you know, like right off the bat, like you don't see any sort of like she actually like tells you to pray and like for a boy and you're like, what? <laughs> So yeah, what was what was that like going through your head, like through all those parts of it? It was um, it's actually really, really cool to be able to read those scripts and, and play out those scenes because I feel like within the LGBTQIA plus community, the stories that are told on screen are often traumatic and portray, you know, extremely difficult um, relationships between, you know, a queer person and their parents. And so, especially between, you know, a Muslim family. And I thought it was really cool that we were able to show a different side of things, not only for, you know, the show, but also to kind of give the viewer hope that, you know, it doesn't always have to be traumatic and scary and it could be beautiful and accepting. And something that I give credit to the writers for is, um, incorporating you know that prayer scene and having Raheem's mom uh encourage him to pray using the tasbi it's such a juxtaposition that that's one of my favorite shots of, of the show that are of really my career is you know seeing a gay boy with painted nails and you know praying with the beads in his hand it's not something i don't think anyone has ever seen before on television and I think, you know, it gives viewers who resonate with Raheem in terms of their sexuality and their religion that those two things can coexist without, um, you know, without conflicting. And I thought that was really groundbreaking and just impressive. And I'm really glad that I got to be one of the first actors to, to, to show that kind of side of the coming out story. Yeah, I mean, like when you're when you're actually praying, 
like I'm like sitting there like oh my god this is so intimate like how like I can't be here for this this is like this is like a personal this is so personal because prayer is so so personal I know for myself like it's just so like so like to see it like on television, cause you don't really get to see that so often. So it was like, it was a very, it was very, it was very, um, it was very moving. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, it's all thanks to our writers and one in particular, Nasser Samara, who was uh, really in charge of Raheem's storyline uh, this season. He is a Mexican Palestinian man who is gay. And he was the one that kind of um, led the way in terms of writing this this story and kind of pushed for that kind um, kind of representation. So uh, I'm really glad that I got to be the one to, sh to portray that on camera. And I was actually curious, like there was one scene, like so you do the whole like when your uncle comes, you have to like pretend to be straight and like. So I was actually curious, like what your thoughts were when. When you when you're sitting down with your mom in the show and and you're telling her how like you know I don't want to do this next time and she just like accepts it. So what like like how do you feel about like the fact that like like why why wouldn't she just like let you be you know yourself to begin with uh, you know like if she's like accepting it so fast like what 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 do you think like the reason was that that she didn't want you to do that to begin with. I think um, I think the characters and the dynamic between Raheem and his mom is complex. You know, not everything's picture perfect. And I think it's easy to kind of like live your life and, lives and accept someone, your son or whoever for who they are. But then it's another thing to kind of like, um, for lack of a better word, like portray that to your family or friends and make that sort of thing that's, that make that sort of thing like public to the people around you. So I, I thought that was like really important in the story as well, because, you know, like I said, not everything's picture perfect and no one's perfect. And there are gonna be bumps on the road in terms of the coming out story and acceptance in general. Um, but I really loved how, you know, once Raheem put his foot down and really stood up for himself after feeling like he was forced back into the closet to please someone else, how receptive his mother was to changing that behavior and, and correcting. Cause it's all, it's all a learning experience. I'm sure for Raheem's mom, this is not something that she'd ever thought she'd have to go through. And for Raheem too, like, I don't think that's ever, ever something that, you know, he necessarily wanted to have to go through, but it's a learning curve and you have to be accepting of the people around you when you're coming out that they're also not going to be perfect and it's not going to be amazing all the time and to have that kind of mutual understanding and a correction of that behavior i think was important to 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 show yeah it was it was great i mean it was like uh yeah the end the cat chemistry and the whole uncle like it was just funny you you and you you and Isabella were great like playing off of each other I love that yeah she's like my favorite scene partner I love working with that girl she's amazing was there any like improv scenes between you two or um there wasn't like scenes that were improv everything's scripted on the show but there were some kind of like ad libs and stuff and things and in the finale episode there's this scene where uh, um <laughs> Raheem joins the Salazars in, in the crowd in the auditorium as they you know wait for Victor to accept his award and that scene between Raheem and Pilar where uh, I think like Pilar was like oh did you see da 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 on Creek Secrets and Raheem was like oh um I don't read Creek Secrets because Connor says gossip is bad for the soul. Um, and then that last line, he's so wise. And then the both of us went, yeah, at the same time without having practice or rehearsal at all, just for one take because you're like, this is our, you know, our last, our final days on the show. Like, let's just, you know, be fun and, and like kind of play with that banter that we have 
in real life and put that on the show. So we did that for one take and we're like, that was funny. Like we didn't think, you know, we would both do that at the same time, but then we did. And then I got the locked cuts a few weeks ago, like before the show premiered and I was watching through and I, they actually put that in the show and I texted Bella immediately. I was like, oh my God, remember when we did that thing that we said they wouldn't even put in the show, they ended up putting in the show. And I thought it was like, so funny. It's probably not that funny, but to us, like it was a pretty cool moment. So that's probably like one of my favorite things that I improv Um, There was another part, um, it was a scene with Raheem, Victor and Andrew in Brasstown where Victor is like showing Raheem you know, his profile on the gay dating app. And then Andrew goes, oh, do you want, um, do you want pictures of my torso? Like my camera rolls like 99% headless torsos. And then scripted, it was just Victor going, of course it is. And then this, the scene ended, but they kept cameras rolling. So Victor went, of course it is. And then Raheem went, of course it is. And then Andrew went, <laughs> like, and they ended up putting that in the show too. So um, yeah, th those were like the really only kind of moments that I feel like we improv or like ad-libbed or whatever that I'm, you know, really happy that they put in the show because I think they're really fun. And I think it even made it in the trailer too. It was that, that scene with like, got me. Andrew, like just whenever he, when Mason shows up, it's like, it's just, it's just like, it's just so much energy. It's great. Yeah, uh, Mason is, he's a really talented guy and he's so funny. And I'm really, I, I love his character arc throughout the whole series. Like in season one, he was kind of a jerk and like almost bordering bully. And then to see him turn around and be so accepting and, and friendly towards Victor and all his friends, it was like, it was really nice to see. Mm-hmm. He definitely has a lot of the cat, like I think of most of, I mean, everyone has a lot of character development, but he had like a real turnaround from like season one. I agree, yeah. Um. So speaking of other characters, Benji, I mean, this season you guys like, were like, cre it was, the chemistry was, was fire. I mean, you and George, I mean, every scene together was like, you guys like, I mean, the one, the one where you're taking off your shirt and he's like, what, you're going after me now? And you're like, shut up. <laughs> like, that was just like, it was that so was, good. Oh, shut up. I just remember that wasn't scripted. That wasn't scripted uh, either. I, I definitely added the shut up. <laughs> yeah, no, the shut up was not scripted. Um, I just did that. And then I asked the script coordinator, I was like, can I just keep saying that? And she was like, oh, no one's telling me no. So yeah, that wasn't scripted either. I laughed so hard because you could see on your face that it looks so natural. It did not like, it did not come off as scripted. So it was very, it was very well done. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I was, I'm glad to hear that the chemistry like translated on camera because that was really the first time Raheem and, and um, Benji had really ever interacted in the, in the show. So like to get an entire like two episodes where we just had scenes together was really cool and, and fun because I got to work with a new scene partner and it ended up being really great. And yeah, George too, he's everyone on the show I could gush about for hours, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed those, those scenes in particular too. I thought the yeah. comedy was great during those, those scenes too. Yeah, I mean, when you're tutoring him and you're like banging the pen down and you're like, let's get, come on, let's do it. Like, you know, or like the coffee when you hand him the coffee and you're like, well, you, you're going to see me, you know, I'm going to drink the, whatever. Yeah. Exactly. The exact but, line, but yes. Um, you think I'm a lot now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, there's something to be said about like being really comfortable with the character and like being able to grow as an actor with your character. I definitely feel like everybody at the end, at the end, like season three really came into their own and their performances were just that much stronger and 
you know, I never thought the performances were weak to begin with, but I, I never thought that it could be as good as it, it was. And I'm, I'm really impressed with everybody. So, um, yeah, I, I think a lot of us did really well this season. And we actually spoke to Tyler last, yesterday, um, and he was great. He was, you know, giving us all the insight about like you, your chemistry and like how you guys worked off each other. And um, what what was it like having a new person on the on the cast? And like, what was it like getting yourselves comfortable with each other? Um, yeah, what was that like? It was really great. Tyler is not only a great actor but he's a really friendly and awesome guy like uh the first time we met it was for i think it was episode two where i just literally spilled on him and we don't see him again for a couple episodes but I, we all clicked like i i shout out to our casting director josh einson he is magic like he's able to find the best actors that work the best with all of us and it's amazing but yeah like having a new actor on the show was exciting because you know at one point I was the new kid on on the show so it, it was cool to like kind of see that dynamic play out through someone else um but yeah working with Tyler was great I, I really enjoyed all of our scenes together even though there weren't many um but I every time we got to work together it just worked really well he actually told us you guys actually spilled on each other. That was like a real thing. We really spilled on each other. Oh my God, we spilled on each other so much. <laughs> um, the first time I spilled on him, I drenched that kid and they had like 10 different shirts for him to wear. And it was outside and it was cold and it wasn't very pleasant, I could imagine. And then, but that was just water. So he, he got the easy end of it. Um, but then when he spilled on me, I think it was episode seven. I um, can't really remember. Yeah, I, when he spilled on me, it was in a wine glass. So they actually had to use grape juice. Um, mm. So it wasn't just water. Um, he spilled on me many, many times. And times were like, like, I'm pretty sure costumes only had like five or six different shirts. And so I would literally, after each setup, go back to cast holding and they would just blow dry me until it was dry enough to spill again. And I smelled like grape juice. That grape juice was like seeping into my pants and my underwear towards the end of the day. It was not fun, but that's movie magic, so. Yeah. And um, so in one scene, you actually tell Victor that you guys kissed, you and Connor. Um, we actually don't get to see Raheem kiss in this season. Was that was that something like you talked about with the writers? Like, was there was there something that we missed? Like, or that was just like in the script, like not that Raheem's not going to kiss this season? Um, yeah, I think I was the only cast member that didn't kiss this season. Um, I'm not really sure why. Uh, I think the writers just had a lot of work to do in terms of wrapping up the show and us being only ordered eight episodes versus 10. They decided it wasn't important enough to include in the show. Well, we do get a nice scene at the end between you and Connor at the carnival. He did tell us the story that he gave you a bear or something at the end. He did. Yeah bear that he gives me on the show I actually took home as like a souvenir of like my first time at the carnival at the winter carnival and did um did anything change between you and Michael this season because I feel like in season two Michael's the one kind of like pushing you to like oh, Victor's trying to like push you to like do more and then in like this season you're kind of like that and victor like you got to stand up like you're the one kind of like pushing him so was that like hard was that dynamic like how like was that hard to change um no i i didn't think it was hard at all to change it was um definitely a different side of that relationship but i think once you take the romantic aspect out of something and all that's left is friendship 
I think both the characters just want the best for each other. And I think we were able to do that, um, mostly because we're really close friends in real life. And so we were just able to kind of put th that like friendship hat on in a way and, you know, give each other advice as if we would in real life. Um, and I'll just two more questions before we get to the game. Um, so like at the end of the season, Victor's like embrace the scary. What does that mean for you? So Victor like gets up on stage and he gives a whole speech about how to him just, you know, in life you have to embrace the scary. So when, uh, yeah. Yeah. So what is, what does that mean for you? I think embracing the scary means like what Victor said, um, being like afraid isn't the same as like, being afraid isn't a bad thing, you know? Like when you're uncomfortable, that's when you do the most growth and you can't really grow when you're comfortable and feel like you're safe and secure. So once you step out of that comfort zone, you're able to see things from a different perspective and kind of move forward on your own in a way that, you know, helps you grow as a human, as a person, as a friend. Yeah, I think that's what it means to embrace the scary. Okay. Um, and also, um, was there any was there anything else you would have liked to have seen from Rahim's character throughout the series? And once the sh the credits roll, what where do you think Rahim would be after um, the show ends? Um, I think I wish I could have seen more, like of that dynamic between Raheem and Pilar because in season two like half of my scenes are with Bella Isabella Ferreira and we got to see that friendship I think the fans really enjoyed seeing that dynamic between the two it was just easy like I wish we could have seen more of that because I feel like season three was so focused on like the couples and their issues as couples instead of like necessarily leaning on your friends for those kind of issues so i i definitely wish i could have seen more of that and that's something i think bella can agree on um but again like the writers had a lot of work to do in a smaller amount of time so maybe they just didn't think that they needed to show that in the show um as far as where i see raheem after the winter carnival, after the finale. I see him, you know, graduating from Creekwood and, you know, coming into his own as a person, as a queer person. And I don't know, Raheem's got really great outfits. So maybe he'd be in like fashion school or something. Yeah, I like that. Do you have, um? do, do you ever think that that Raheem and Victor could ever like potentially down the line, like end up together? Or is that like totally like after everything he put Raheem through, it's like kind of like moot? I think that ship has sailed. Okay. Um, I think, I think Raheem deserves better to be honest. <laughs> No, oh, that's good. I like that. You're working on a, a show, right? Exo Kitty right now? Yeah. It's the, yeah, Exo Kitty for Netflix. How's, how's that been for you? Uh oh, it's been an experience. <laughs> it's been fun. It's been just really hard work, long days and overseas. It's, um, a lot of work. Have fun doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing because we love you. I love you. So thank you. Just uh thank you so much. No, thank you so much. All right, bye. All right, take care.